And the road is definitely getting a little more challenging. It is 7.40 and I am on my way to Langdale and uh, Langdale to Powell River, Powell River to Texada Island for a few days of wandering around. Pretty excited about it. I've never been to Texada by land. Just. Uh, when I had a boat, I'd stop in there occasionally. So yeah, it should be interesting. back as well. Nice. Sa Ye Yin, or Texada Island is BC's largest Gulf Island at 50 kilometers or 30 miles long. Named in 1791 by Spanish explorers, Texada is known for its wealth of minerals, although whaling was also important during its early days. In 1876, a whaler named Harry Trim discovered iron ore and mining began in earnest. Copper was discovered a few years later and gold was mined at Marble Bay in 1898. Van Anda became a boom town in the late 1890s, boasting the only opera house north of San Francisco, three hotels with saloons, a hospital, illegal distillery, and many stores and businesses. Fire devastated the community not once, but three times, destroying many of the buildings. While still a thriving community today, Van Anda is much sleepier and less populated than during the glory day. Other industries on Texada Island include logging, small sawmills, an organic fertilizer business, and many of the cottage industries found everywhere on the Gulf Islands.
Found a spot right on the edge of the water. Bit breezy, but we got a little nook back here where we can cook. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Shelter Point was occupied by La Amon people from at least 3,000 years ago to just before contact with colonists, according to an archaeological study by Colleen Parsley. This area was clearly a village consisting of several longhouses and may represent the best preserved example of village cultural topography that survives on the south coast, says Parsley. morning. How'd you sleep? Mm -hmm. I don't know, I guess. Mm -hmm. I slept good actually. It was weird, I woke up and it's like, why does the, why did the waves sound totally <sighs> different? It's mm -hmm. because the tides go over. Did you walk over to the I did, island? yeah. Okay. You can't go on the island, it's I private can't. property. Oh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. How do you feel about the coffee? How do I feel about the coffee? Yeah. Excellent. We'll go get my cup. I can make one of the espresso for me too. Or I can do one in the French press. Oh. What's your preference? Even hot water's good. And I can use the instant thingies. Instant? I can make a regular coffee. Okay, thank you. That sounds mm. good. Yeah. All cleaned up. I'm heading out. Central Road. Decided to turn around because of that little tree there. I might be able to get over it, but with the bike totally loaded like this, I'll go try the other way. There's another another trail or road in. It's hard to tell.
Wow. So this is called Shehetekwan. Shehetekwan? And apparently there was a bunch of stills up here where they made bootleg booze for the Americans. Alcohol prohibition ended in BC in 1920, but continued until 1933 in the US, creating a lucrative market for illegal whiskey or moonshine. The Pocahontas still was a three-story building housing a scotch boiler, producing up to 500 gallons of moonshine a week. This thriving enterprise came crashing down on December 5th, 1928, when customs officers, acting on a tip from a couple of arrested rum runners down in False Creek, arrived in Pocahontas Bay on the MV Dispatcher. They saw a flickering light on shore where they found a cabin and, along the beach, the camouflaged still. The still was disassembled and moved to Van Anda, where it was auctioned off. This is a beautiful site, now owned by the La Amon First Nations. This way might take us to Mount Pocahontas. The road is not following my map. Yeah, Back Road Map Books has got it on here. We'll record a track. Looks pretty good. Definitely bigger than the first one. This is a steep but very smooth and nicely maintained road. Watch for turtles. Called red band turtles or something like that. Definitely steep. Where the original one that I was trying to follow comes out. Looks better on this end. Ooh. Very steep. Wasn't really expecting this. Oh, there's a little trail goes up that way. Maybe we should go that way. There's the little water tower, South Powell River. Hmm. 
back road map book shows this road going this way and it looks like it might actually connect to the main road going down the, the island. We'll go follow it for a while, see what it looks like. Can't really tell which way. This is the first place I've been where back road map books is a better layer than Gaia Overland. Gaia Overland doesn't show any of these roads. Malaspina Strait there again. Gets kind of weird here because this looks like the main road, but on the map, it does not. Give this one a try, see if we can wander up to get connected up to the main north-south road. Again, it's off the road map, but uh, seems to be a pretty main line. And that could be interesting, looks like it might go down to the water. But we're going to take the main line and go to Bob's Lake, see what that looks like. This is the north side of Bob's Lake. Nice. Nice. Go around to the south side, I think. I'd have to go have a look at that. Back on the Texada FSR, heading south. Let's see, uh, let's see if I can get to Anderson Bay. This is Angel Lake. It's not really a uh, site. Somewhere online, somebody mentioned camping here. Wow. Pretty cool. Don't know if you can see it on the camera, but you can see all the way down the straight here to uh, Seashelt, maybe? Cool. And the road is definitely getting a little more challenging. She keeps going down here. Pretty big cliff off to my right.
should go that way. Huh. This is the secondary. Pretty big cliff off that side too. back to the Anderson Bay Road. I don't know. It's still there or completely shut down. Should be right here somewhere. Uh, that's probably where it used to come out. It keeps going. Hmm. The road has got flat. Just slowly going down. This does not look like a deactivated road. This looks like the end. Sort of structure up here. Gas lines, maybe. Yeah, so this is the end of the road as far as the map is concerned. She goes down a two track. Anderson Bay. There used to be a small community in Anderson Bay, but it is now completely deserted. With the lower two-thirds of the eastern peninsula and the opposite shore forming Anderson Bay Provincial Park. However, the land at the head of the bay is privately owned. There's a picnic bench over here. How cool is this? Oh, a little river here. Stream. Oh yeah, I am liking this. Wow.
I am leaving Anderson Bay. Probably one of the nicest campsites I've ever had. First bit is easy, flat, until you get to the diversion. Here we are back at the diversion, and it's uh, nine minutes since I left. Oh, it's 9.45, I'm just coming back to the the regular road that was deactivated, the end, of, the end of the diversion, as I call it. So that's about 17 minutes since I left Anderson Bay. And I'm riding pretty easy here. I'm trying to conserve energy because I know that there's just long, long, steep poles going up. seem quite interested in me. They're the first deer I've seen on the island. Apparently it's infested with them because there's no predators. Back at Angel Lake and it is pretty much half an hour uh, since I left Anderson Bay. So much quicker than I thought it was. It felt a lot longer going in there when you're wondering you know, what the road's gonna be like and stuff. No, well, Gaia has picked a route down to Shingle uh, Point or Beach or whatever it's called. Now, that doesn't mean that it's passable, but uh, worth a try. Either way, I guess. piece of road here is called Break Your Ass Hill. I'm guessing it was named by a bicycle guy. It is steep. There's the ocean. Cool. Yeah, it is steep. Top end of text of uh, Laskidi over there, and then that would be Hornby, Denman. This break your ass hill has got a bunch of uh, cutouts for water diversion. right here. Still very steep. The truck suggests it definitely comes out somewhere. Okay, I think this is called Shingle Beach Road, but I'm not sure. Well, that was interesting.
Hello. How are you? That's Connie. And she uh, has done a lot of work to clean this place up. She says she'll never turn a bike or a, or a motorcycle away. And it's 18 a night. What a gorgeous place. Wow. Beautiful. She does reservations too. Wow. Holy smokes. And a biker. Well, this place is absolutely stunning. And I would come back here. But it's, uh, it's only 11.15. And it was good talking to Patty. That's his bike right there. He's over here for a couple of days. But I need fuel and booze. And then I have to decide where I'm going. So that is the plan. Kick your ass hill. This will take me back up to Gillies Bay. Sword. Muat Bay Road, that is what that was. And now this is back on the one I took out of Shelter Bay. Shelter Point. The first, uh, the first night. It's just up here. Yeah, that's it down there. place with the win. Quite enjoyed it. Good sangies, good coffee. And I found out the ferry is at one o'clock. 17 minutes away, it's 12.19, so go get some fuel and head over there. Well, the gas station has got air, free air, and it's a buck 89 liter, which is 10 cents more than was in the city, but very important to know that they're closed on Sundays and holidays. At Blubber Bay, there's these old rental cottages. Probably used to be part of the some company town or something. Right up to the front and over to the right. By the building and the blue roof. You can see, I think there's some other motorcycles. You'll just go to the right. Okay, cool. <laughs> 